Hi everyone, first up on the docket tonight with the Michael Jackson case racing to an end. Two huge rulings today that could change the course of this trial. One ruling good for the defense, one good for the prosecution. First for the defense. Back in 1993, another boy drew pictures of Jackson's genitals after accusing Jackson of molesting him. Jackson was then photographed. I have been forced to submit to a dehumanizing and humiliating examination by the Santa Barbara County Sheriff Department and the Los Angeles Police Department earlier this week. They served a search warrant on me which allowed them to view and photograph my body including my penis, my buttocks, my lower torso, thighs, and any other area that they wanted. They were supposedly looking for any discoloration, spotting, blotches, or other evidence of a skin color disorder. But today the judge ruled the jury will not hear about that. Ruling number two, good for the prosecution. The jurors will hear from the accuser in this case again on tape. NBC's Mike Taibbi is at the courthouse, along with NBC News analyst and former Santa Barbara County Sheriff Jim Thomas. All right, Jim, let me start with you. You were involved in this case back in 1993. Why would this account of Jackson's genitals have been helpful to the prosecutors in this case? Basically, Dan, what it would have been was it would be more 1108 information. In other words, would have shown that Michael Jackson had been in the position with another young accuser and to the point to where that accuser could uh, give some graphic uh, description of Michael Jackson in an excited state. That would have told the jurors that he had been there before and if he's been there before, it's likely he is there this time. And it was really to, they said, to rebut the notion that the defense had put forward that Michael Jackson was this private, um, kind person where nothing happened. And they said this would disprove it. The judge saying, no, uh, it, it is not going to, uh, to come in. Here's what the prosecutor's argument was. This is uh, number one. The fact that this child was able to give a description of a unique feature of his anatomy that could not have been known by him except for a very intimate acquaintance with Mr. Jackson is very good circumstantial evidence of the fact that the relationship between he and at least that child was something more than casual and something more than innocent. The judge ruled, I'm going to deny the request to bring in evidence of the blemished penis. The prejudicial effect would far outweigh the probative value. All right. So Mike Taibbi, the uh, prosecutors lose on that one, but they win on another big one, right? Yeah, I think showing this tape uh, can have and likely will have an impact on the jury, impact in that they'll pay very close attention to it. Don't forget, this accuser was Let's on the Let's explain what the tape is again. Uh, the tape is the police interview of the accuser in which he, for the first time, and on tape, obviously, an audio tape, uh, videotape, did describe the allegations, what he alleged Michael Jackson did to him. I forget, he said it first to a psychiatrist, Dr. Stan Katz, and then after Katz reported this uh, series of allegations by this accuser, he was then brought in along with his siblings and his mother to give their own police interview. So this is that tape, mm -hmm. presumably more emotional, presumably with him less guarded, more sympathetic than he appeared to be on the stand. Don't Get when he was on the stand, he ended up being perceived by many as sort of dissembling a little bit, yeah. not that familiar with the truth or contradicting himself, and sort of a wise guy, very much a wise guy, challenging Mesereau, etc. Not a particularly sympathetic figure, although, as Jim Thomas has pointed out, someone who did stick to his story throughout, not, not, not at all shaken and, from that basic and Mike, story. And now the defense is threatening, they're saying, all right, you guys want to bring in that tape so the boy gets to testify effectively a second time in a way you like better? Fine, you want to do that? We're going to call the boy boy back, we're going to call his mother back, they're making all sorts of threats, but is it actually going to happen? Well, I have to tell you, I've spoken to defense sources on this issue, and they say it is not a threat, that because of the defendant's right to confront his accuser, even if that accuser is on videotape, they have to find some way to challenge him, and the only way to do it is to bring the boy back. Some have said that's a huge risk. Ron Richards, who's one of our sometime legal analysts, has said that, that this is a, a real threat, potentially a fatal error in calling this boy back, because what if the second time around, having listened to where this trial has gone, he really nails it? Exactly. And he comes on and says, listen, this stuff happened. Well, that may be the last image of this accuser. 
accuser that this jury yeah. has to think of to what, what they saw and what they heard from this boy, and yeah. it could be very difficult. However, uh, the defense is confident that they can get him to, to wow. say what they know he will say. All right, Mike and Jim, stick around for a minute. Also joining us, MDC, MSNBC analyst, former prosecutor Susan Filan in Santa Maria, and criminal defense attorney Jonas Spilbor. Um, all right, Jonna is a defense attorney. All right, so you lose this, this effort to keep the tape out. Now there's going to be this tape of the boy being more emotional, probably more convincing about what he's saying about Michael Jackson. Do you really risk it to bring him back in, bring mom back in? Mm -mm. No way. I, I would not put that kid on the stand again for a second bite at the apple for all the reasons you mentioned. He's going to be a lot more uh, well rehearsed, so to speak. I think what Tom Mesereau can do, though, with this tape is just show the jurors that, you know what, all it shows is that this kid knows how to lie repeatedly because he's, he already told his story to the jury. He's telling it again on this tape. First of all, it's cumulative. Second of all, it's hearsay. It got in. So what? I think he just needs to show that this kid is an accomplished liar, and hopefully he can show that maybe yeah. closing argument from viewing the tape. No. That's the best he can do. I don't know. Susan, what do you think? Oh, boy, putting the boy on the stand again would be legal suicide. What that would do, you see, because when he comes on, he's going to come on as a defense witness, which means that the prosecution gets to question him through cross-examination, which means they can lead, lead, lead. They can lead their horse right into the barn. And I think to leave this case with the jury, with the accuser, having been rehabilitated by the prosecution, would be great for the prosecution and fatal for the defense. So you think, uh, both of you seem to think that it's bluster on the part of the uh, defense sources that Mike is talking to. Mike, is it possible this is just bluster? You know, I don't think so, and I think there's also another element to consider about this tape. There was some discussion this morning about how exactly to edit it. The judge wanted some of it edited out, he said there was extraneous material, but there was an inference that the way the uh, the police officials, deputy sheriffs, were questioning this boy that seemed to lead him on, and you know, there's always an issue in these alleged molestation cases about how those interviews are conducted. Perhaps it'll be shown that the boy was led too carefully in this interview, too persuasively. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the boy will say some things that he later contradicted in his testimony in this trial, and Mesero may be able to go, to go to town with that. We'll have to see exactly how useful yeah. this tape is. I don't, I don't agree just uh, on, on its face that this is legal suicide. I think the legal team has a sense of what's on They know what's on the tape and a, a sense of what they can do with it. Yeah, Jim Thomas, do you know what's on that tape? No, not more than anybody else, Dan. I, I'm told that it's a tape that shows him in a much more sympathetic mood. It shows him uh, reluctant to, to talk about what had happened. And it kind of fits the profile of what we've been told by the experts who have testified in this case. It does not come by as rehearsed. It comes by as something that law enforcement actually had to draw out, which is consistent with at least my experience in dealing with people in sexual encounters. So, uh, so does this mean, Jonna, that the defense made some sort of mistake that allowed the prosecutor to bring this back in? I mean, because what basically what the judge is saying is, as a result of what the defense did in this case, now prosecutors can introduce this tape of the boy to show that it wasn't scripted. But there was really no way the defense could avoid this, right? It was not a mistake. The only reason this is getting in is because the defense impeached this kid's credibility. And if you look at the California Evidence Code, Section 1236, they're allowed to bring in a prior consistent statement. That's what this is. It's a consistent statement if certain conditions are met. Now, I can argue all day long that those conditions are not met, but the statement's getting in. They had to attack the kid's credibility, Dan. You know that in their case in chief. That's what they did, but that's what opened the door to get this this video in yeah yeah um, one, go ahead Mike yeah one last point this may not be the last image of this boy on tape or this boy being examined and cross-examined the last image from the defense sir rebuttal could well be the mother of the accuser and everybody knows what her five days in the stand were like and if, if that's the image and that she's supposedly the ringleader of this alleged scam against against Michael Jackson that may be the image just so people understand sir rebuttal means that all right so right now we're in the prosecution's case where they're responding to the defense the defense may get a final opportunity to respond to the prosecution uh, that would be it goes rebuttal and then sir rebuttal so that's what Mike's talking about Let's